And then you find in verse uh, 1 of chapter 7, And after these things I saw angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any, on any tree. So the wind is held back, which is a type of the Holy Spirit. What happens? He shifts over to Israel, and, he, and, he, and you go on into, uh, into uh, chapter 7. You find that he goes and seals 144,000 of the remnant tribes of Israel in, uh, in, in these Jews who are the remnants and the descendants of Jacob or Israel. He, see, he, he seals 12,000 of every tribe as the remnant of Jacob who, you know, who became Israel are sealed for end time demonstration. So you go on and you find that sealing is done and you, and you find in verse 14 these words of chapter 7. And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest, and he said to me, these are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. So these people washed in these white robes came out of tribulation. So that means somebody had to go into tribulation to come out of tribulation. It, it's not going to be a pre-tribulation rapture. That's been taught for years. Folks have settled down in a comfort zone. They don't, even, they don't even think about the end times. What they have now in front of them are pacifist preachers preaching how to live on earth in the here and now, not preparing for the end of what's about to come. You get Joel Osteen teaching your best life now, how to have faith, to live by comfort zone stuff to keep you disempowered. Now, chapter 8, verse 1, I'm skipping through because I haven't gotten to the main thrust of this. Chapter 8, verse 1, and when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. And I saw the seven angels who stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. So you see, the, the seventh seal houses the seven trumpets. You see that? The seventh seal, open it, and it released from the seventh seal are the seven trumpets. So now the trumpets begin to blast, and you begin to see culminating judgments and all kinds of tormenting things increasing. All this is is an increase of agony on earth in order to get what? People to repent. Before the wrath, God increases the torment and agony and all the dysfunctionality of earth wanting people to turn to him. But man just get that, gets that stiff neck adamant attitude that I will not bow to this Jesus Christ. But some folk will come to him. So the seventh, seventh seal houses the seven trumpets. We won't get into the trumpets today and into the seven vows but in your own time, if you study Revelation, you'll see the whole picture unfold. I believe we can get into the apocalypse right here and give you enough of a thrust into it that as you begin to read it all, it'll begin to make sense to you all the way through. So we're going to go back and focus in on these four horsemen of the apocalypse. You saw the rest of the apocalypse unfold with the other seals, the fifth seal, the sixth seal, the seventh seal. But let's just zero in on the first four seals as for now. The four, first four seals of the apocalypse. You see, the white horse had a rider who came forth. A lot of folks have interpreted that to be Jesus Christ returning in victory. But it doesn't appear to be Jesus Christ for this reason. White horse, he that sat on him had a bow and the crown was given unto him. And he went forth conquering and to conquer. Jesus does not fight with a bow. You study the Bible, out of his mouth proceeds a two-edged sword. A bow reflects what? Physical warfare with natural means. Jesus does not have to use physical warfare. He can just talk and create universes, galaxies. He can talk and make anything or do away with anything he wants to. 
He can vocalize in decrees. The Christian fights in prophecy. The Christian fights with his tongue. Your mouth is what launches spiritual weapons. But conformity to the nature of Jesus Christ must be founded in you first so that your words are generated by the spirit and not by you. When you speak it, it will come to pass if the spirit said it. If you said it, we'll be standing around here a long time waiting on that to happen because you just thought it up and said it. That's the key that unlocks God. Am I full of the Holy Ghost? And is he speaking from a place of enthronement from within the confines of my physical body, which is his habitation? Now, conquering entity goes forth, the first seal, with a bow and a crown given unto him. He has a crown given unto him, and he has a bow. That's the other a crown Jesus given. Always had a crown. Jesus always had a crown. He didn't want to give him that. This clown was given a crown. So it couldn't be Jesus. <laughs> right. So I kind of hopefully have un has un I've under undermined that part that believes this is Jesus. Because a lot of folks are going to believe what? This is Jesus. The Muslims will call him the Mahdi. They're looking for him. They're waiting for him. They're praying during Ramadan right now. For the return of the Mahdi. Every major religion is looking for this holy man that's coming to bring peace and unity to the earth. And a lot of Christians will be deceived looking for a kingdom on earth and happiness and peace and solitude on earth. When you're through the earth, you're looking for another kingdom to come, not this kingdom here. You know it's defiled. That keeps you safe. Because you're not looking for longevity and happiness on earth.
Don't ever switch over to looking for happiness, longevity, peace, and joy on this planet. The kingdom of God is what? Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's the kingdom. Don't look for it here. Get in the Holy Ghost. Let the Holy Ghost get into you. That's the kingdom. Second seal. Another beast says, come and see. Red horse. Power given to take peace from the earth and that they should kill one another and that was given unto him a great sword. That's war. They kill one another. They don't say God kills them or the devil kills them. They kill one another. War. World War I, World War II, Korean War, Vietnam War, the Iraq War, the war in Afghanistan. Go on and on. Wars and rumors of wars. That's this thing being loose. So we can plainly see he, this, is, this, 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 this one has already gone forth, that writer. Look at this. When he had, he had opened the third seal, come and see. A black horse. A pair of balances in his hand. You remember the Bible talks about a just weight and balance? What it means by that, like if you went to, a, to buy a, a, a commodity back in the days of, of old, old and, and the days during Jesus and before that, they would weigh out your commodity. Like if you wanted to get lamb chops, let's say, and you wanted X amount of pounds of lamb chops, they still do that in a local grocery store. Don't they put it on the scale, weigh it, and based on that $4.99 a pound, this five pounds of lamb chop costs about 25 bucks or whatever, adjust weight in the balance. It's all about economic transactions, buying and selling. That's why he talks about the balance.